three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh- he just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Welcome to the O-Line Committee, a trenches perspective on football. The only show in America where an idiot fan like myself gets to sit down and pepper former NFL offensive linemen with questions here. Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, Phil Mackey. What's going on, gentlemen? Well, first of all, 16 years. Yeah, Mackey, 16 16. Years. I had what a sixth is- year, credited season, it went vested. I was injured. Guess what? Still counts toward pension. Wait a second. Still counts still 401k. <laughs> and Wait I second. will claim that sixth year until the day that I die. Wait a second. Hold on a second. I'm pulling up. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, by the way, congratulations. You guys both have Wikipedia pages. So if you're looking oh, at me, if you're wondering. I don't know if you want to read mine. Are these Maggie? people credible? <laughs> you don't want to read mine. Definitely Is there an arrest section on Alex? There's Alex's? definitely an Not arrest 100%. report. <laughs> There's a mug shot. Oh, shit. When you were extra fat, too. Dude, it was so bad. I had no shirt on at the time. So bad. <laughs> Wait, so you had a, a, a bare-chested mug shot? Oh, yeah, it was the best, dude. It was not the time it wasn't. But what are you boy, actually, I'm, what, I'm are, you, uh, what are you at? His 40th birthday cake. His 40th birthday cake is going to be nothing but just his mug shot shirtless. <laughs> what, are you, what was your, Alex, what was your peak playing weight? What are you at right now? Dude, my peak, I was a freshman in college. Like, was drinking a lot. 355. Stop it. It 355? Huge. Huge. Saw a video of myself. I like everyone was telling me how big I was. I was like, nah, not that big. And then we were playing Indiana and I saw like a side shot and my it was dude, it was bad. And I was like, I'm losing weight. I am losing so much weight. But then I only played 325 in the league. Well, if you're a football player like you guys, you're down like 50 pounds, 100 pounds. If you're a football fan like me, you're actually up 50 pounds from when you started watching football right. in uh, college. It's great. Okay, so we're gonna count the uh the two thousand 19 season for Jeremiah. That's of the course. 16th year. Okay. Of course. There we go. Of course. And we're counting I mean, the five minutes listen, Alex was in Seattle saying, during the COVID dude, year. That, 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 that counts. That, I think it was like four weeks. <laughs> Got to play against the Niners, my old team. Went out there. I was out there. It was great. Broken. Okay. Broken and all, but you were there. Broken. Should have seen the doctors. Like, bro, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna put, we're gonna put this guy out there. His knee is wrapped in duct tape. What's happening right now? They're like, dude, you're the youngest candidate for a new knee. I, like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> double hip, double knee replacement. No big uh, deal. So what decade. we're gonna do here? We're gonna. This is this is actually the first ever episode and film breakdown in the yes. history of the O line committee. So when uh, when the historians are looking back someday mm. at the greatest content platforms of all time, ever. they will archive these first these first episodes. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do some film breakdowns where I just present you guys with some random clips that that I found. You're, you guys are gonna have your own clips that you find at some point. But today's episode is a breakdown of one of the best young left tackles in the National Football League. Yes. And you guys both played for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Uh, Purple Daily is the podcast that I host every day, so we all have Vikings ties. Me on the media yep. side, you guys have played. Um, and Alex, you still live in Minnesota, so Christian Love Derisaw, it. left tackle for the Minnesota Vikings is the deep dive we're going to do here today. I love it. I mean, for me, you know, everyone, the thing I love about Darisaw mostly is everyone kind of wrote him off his first year, right? He was kind of hurt. Everyone was like, oh, here we go again. The Vikings don't know how to draft offensive linemen, da 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 And I just, I, I was so pumped when they picked him because I watched him in college. I was like, dude, this dude's a home run. Like, he's a home run, as safe bet as you can get as a left tackle. And then he just had that bumpy start. But, man, he hit the ground running in year two, and it's not going to slow down. No. No. Woody, before we you, – you broke down some Derisaw stuff on Purple Daily this year. Before I, I oh, show yeah. you guys five or six clips, some of them him just humiliating opposing defensive players, uh, what has sort of stood out to you about Derisaw in the first couple years of his young career? You know what I love about him is he's one of those guys that, like, as a player, as a teammate, you love to play next to him because you know he's extremely athletic, he's extremely smart, he's extremely aggressive. But when you're coaching him, that has to be extremely hard because he does so many different things. Like the way he gets out of his stance at times is completely insane, but he makes it work. Or the fact that he can just kind of roll out of his stance at times, but then he'll put one hand on a guy and just demolish him. And you're like, you just don't see that every day. And especially like as a young player, remember he had that surgery and then he came back in like what, halfway through the season? He looked great right away. I remember we were like, dude, this is for a young guy? He's out here throwing dudes around. He pulls around, he looks great. The one thing I will say is 
and I know people get mad about this, is I do think he is the next Trent Williams. I think mm-hmm. he is the next guy reincarnated, just getting ready to step into a role of huge leadership, being able to do it week in and week out. And I think that's what it is, consistency for these guys. It's so hard to go out there week in and week out and do what they do as well as they do. And Christian, for being a young player, makes it look easy. Well, let's pop some film up here. You guys can talk us through here what you see. Got five or six clips. And uh, I'm just going to roll some of this. You talk me through it. In the future, I'm going to give you guys the keys just from a technical standpoint. We're sort of testing out some new stuff here today. So uh, I can draw on here if you want. I can draw little smiley faces. Yes. Uh, I can pretty much do whatever you guys want me to do. So you let me know. But this is uh, Vikings versus Bears here. From These are all from the 2022 season. I'll run the play first at just live speed, and then we can go back and break it down, and you guys can tell us what happened. So Love it. And feel free to narrate however you want to. <laughs> I remember this mm. play. Dude, I love this stuff. Because you just don't see it week in and week out. I mean, the, the, the number one thing here that people aren't going to understand is the redirect speed. Like, you look right. at this and you, you see these guys like, oh, those are big old linemen. Like, Darisaw is a massive human. Like, he's an absolutely enormous human. Look and so when you talk about ours. the ability, yeah. he has all his weight moving left, right? Every part of him is moving left. And then at the second, he sees the inside move by, I believe that's Robert Quinn over there. And on one foot, he is full redirect back inside all of his weight right there. That step, he directs back inside, and now he's in complete balance position, right? The number one thing for offensive linemen when they get themselves out of control is because they're out of balance, right? Like, And he's completely balanced here. He allows to gather himself up there, and then he makes contact with two feet in the ground, right? Two feet in the ground, and then now here, it's like most guys here would be like, oh, wow, he's got an up tall – He's not doing a great body position, but then he drops his hips and he just buries this guy. I mean, his his ability to just drop his hips, control his weight, control his body weight, <laughs> and then just Timber. dump this dude. It's incredible because that is yeah. the special ability that NFL offensive linemen need to have. And when you got two feet, I think I see three feet up in the yep. air there. It's yep. a bad place to be as a defensive. This back. is where John Madden would jump in and be like, "No, when you got when you when you pancake turkey legs guy, coming you got, you got out." Every- there we go. Oh, I love it. We're back. I love it. We're back. <laughs> no, but- more. But like like Jeremiah said, the whole redirect and the fact that he is so big and he's so massive and it's so smooth to me. It's not like one of these guys that's robotic. And the fact that he can collapse a side of an offensive line just by himself and make it look so easy. Like, look how easy this just became for Kirk Cousins, right? Like, you have the entire field to view now. Yeah, you got a little pressure coming inside from the rookie, but there we go. Making a Kirk move, right? We're on the run. We make a throw. All this happens because the left tackle is smart. He's headsy. We're sliding to the left. Nothing's coming outside. I'm going to go bury this dude right down here. God, look at that's that lane fantastic. for Kirk. Dude, that's, that's how you fantastic. make Kirk look like Lamar Jackson right here. Just you know you're just easy. laughing. You know you're easy. laughing the whole time over there. <laughs> this people, you know, people don't think Kirk's mobile, but you clear a, 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 a semi truck hole like this, and he can uh, he can get out I mean, there. And run. Mackie, you might be able to waddle for ten yards there. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be close, but you, you might be able to get ten. I don't even know if Mackie could, dude. He was getting chased pretty hard in there. <laughs> Old Macadat quit football in the eighth Old grade because there was too Dude, much look at this. too much running involved here. So, all right, let's uh, let's see what do we want to go next here. Oh, dude. Oh, this is a good one here. Let me show here you this go. one. This is Vikings Colts. This is in the middle of the actually statistically the greatest comeback in NFL history. Yep. This surpassed the Colts or the uh, um. The Houston Oilers Bills game from 30 years ago. The Vikings were down 33 to nothing, I believe, in this game. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they're mounting their comeback here. So I'll run this play for you guys. The beautiful Jeff Saturday. Jeff class. Saturday. Oh, you're so cool. Here we go. Take her back. All right. There's a couple. Uh, there's a couple plays from this game that are pretty interesting. This is one of them. This is one of the things about him, like. Look how much space he takes up, right? Like, he's got this great presence on the inside, but at the same time, he has great visual on the outside. He knows he's got his chip. He can help his guard. That's another thing that I love about people is that when they have the ability to help the guys around them like he is right here, like he knows he has time because Dalvin's out here to give him a chip. At the same time, why not hold a little body presence for one of the best pass rushers into DeForest Buckner? You know what I'm saying? See that hand right there? Very headsy. At the same time, we have the slide coming here. Like, that's why we're doing this. We're doing this to shut down the inside guy, and Darisaw can be a huge piece of this. Now watch. He goes in a little too much here, and this is where I say he's extremely athletic. This turn open right here can get a ton of guys in trouble, right? Because as they're doing it, the weight is on their outside, so they're not really – they're kind of – we call it a revolving door. You're just spinning open. See that right there? But he's athletic enough and – 
smart enough to get out there, put his hands on him, and still be strong enough to keep moving him around the edge like that. Dude, you very rarely can you see guys turn open like that and just push a guy around the edge, and that has zero effect on the quarterback. Another thing here is, you know, a lot of times when you get this wide technique, if you run it back to the start, right, like you see a guy that's way wide out there, a mistake a lot of young tackles like to make is get a little antsy and be like, holy cow, this guy's way out here. I got to get out of here. Right, like I got to get out of here. I got to get depth. I got to be able to be able to get in front of this guy. And you end up oversetting him, and he comes back across your face. But he's just so patient in his set. He's so patient, letting the things develop in front of him. And when you can have body presence, like Alex was saying, where you can feel it, but not have to turn your head. If you see his horns come back inside, and he's looking at the three technique instead of keeping his eyes on his target, that's where you can just kind of lose everything. But he's just using his body to feel things out and then just keeping his eyes. His eyes never come off that defense bend, which allows him to keep his target, find where he wants to throw his hands. He finds the one place that he can hit 91, which is on the near shoulder, because that's all he's given to hit. And then he hits him with two hands. You can just see the power in his hands here where he's not striking him by any means, but he's so powerful. When he puts his hands on him, he has to redirect and he can't make that turn. This is so like from a fan's perspective, I think what, what goes underappreciated you know, when you're just watching like football on TV, you're usually watching the quarterback and the ball and maybe the receivers and the routes. I think for a guy like me, what goes underappreciated and 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 I now have like doing this with Booney for the last couple of years on Purple Daily, the amount of multitasking you guys have to do as offensive linemen, all within like three or four seconds maximum, right? It's mm-hmm. crazy, dude. You, is, is there going to be a twist? Is there going to be a bull rush? Am I going to have to put a hand on one guy and then, you know, move my hips out to go get... But uh, Mackie, you know, the guy coming to, off the edge. To be fair, a lot of the things that you guys think you have to continuously think about are what we normally just fundamentally do. Like you said, is it a twist? Do I have to feel somebody inside? As long as you're square and you get off the ball square and you keep presence inside with that inside hand, and when we talk to the young guys in the gym, we tell them that that hand is your eyes to the other side. You can never look back in. You can never look to the right if the call is a loco. Why? Because you should be looking to the left in your gap. And so that hand in the opposite gap is there to help you. What are we, what's going on here? Oh, this three technique is getting really heavy. He should not be. I should start to be alert for a twist. Or like in that last one, he's going away. Okay, he's no effect to me. I should get back out here. And that's as you start playing, you start to use your more of your senses around you instead of your eyes. What's a loco, by the way? A loco is a sort to the left. So that last one was probably a loco. You're sorting the mic to plus one. If the mic doesn't come and the will does, we take the will. Dude, it gets crazy, Mac. You know how it is. We've done shows before. We're going to have to start. I got to get a tool, man. I got to get We're a gonna pen. We're going to do an install. We're going to have to do an I, install well, packet. You know what? We should pull, Jeremiah, we should pull up our rookie install package for him. We'll At one that. point, no, you you showed me. You have like 20 notebooks of handwritten notes from every film session practice. Oh, it's like ridiculous. We, th- we, we threaten to do that on Purple Daily, but we should do it here on, on the O-Line Committee. That's just one year. Where you guys just read from your notes from an NFL film session. Hey, I'm yeah. surprised yeah. Alex took notes. I was pleasantly surprised that Alex did homework, hey, actually. It's funny you say that because one of the notebooks I'm using right now is the one of my last notebooks with the Vikings. So we were talking about protections and quick ace right and all this stuff and key right and day two of training camp football focus and fun. Dude, you know yeah. this is addicting. Yeah. I mean, the, my first page of this book that I have in front of me is training camp day one with the Car- or the Carolina Panthers. So we keep all of that. All oh. of it. So exciting. My wife secretly throws it away, though. Drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm like, hey, where's my Niners notes? Oh, I threw them away. Why oh, would you do the, that? Do you want the, oh, the week three notes? Yeah, I'm sorry Just about that. Throw my tests uh... away, too. I'm so proud of those. I used to put them up on the, the – don't even judge me. So this is the same game here. This is the comeback, and I believe this was – I'll just run it here. I believe this is an 80-yard touchdown run by Dalvin Cook here. Mm. And you'll see Darius on number 71, left side of your screen. That's a 300 plus pound man, by the Dude. way, getting out to Stefan Gilmore on the edge to clear That's ridiculous. a massive hole. Oh, this that's is ex- one of the 80. It's a big, like a 40 yard run here by Dalvin. I'm telling you, that's why he's so good. His ability here to get out in space, right? Like the Vikings struggled all year, as we know, to find an identity in the run game, right? Was it zone? Was it pin pull? But this game really kind of started making them realize how when you have two athletic tackles with Brian O'Neill and Christian Darisaw, the ability to get these guys out on the edge, like you can see Gilmore wants no part of that. Zero. Like he wants he wants <laughs> like he sees you seven got it, one big dog. on the edge. And they made the rule think god that you can't cut these guys coming out anymore because that that used to be the worst like you'd be running at him and he'd just dive at your knees but now like they're just getting out of the way because they know this is a business decision 
This Go is a film. Stephon Gilmore <laughs> business decision. Do I want to play five more years in the NFL or do I want to get smushed into the turf here in Minneapolis? Right. Keep going. So he just ability to drop and clear this because you always have to clear 17's down block here, right? Like if you pull too flat on this, you're going to get picked off by 17 trying to go up against defensive end. He pulls, drops, and goes, and he's running as fast as I mean, it is. That's four like that's like four nine speed from a 300 pound man. Look how smooth he is. See how there's no breaks in any of his run. He's just smooth all the way around. And this is one of the biggest things that when you're watching an alignment is right about now they'll start to break down. But you notice how he continues to run is the more you threaten those defenders outside shoulder, the more they have to continue running out there. And then it just becomes this kick out at the end. And there's no stop anywhere. There's no measuring. There's no how do I hit him. You just keep running. And when you're that big and you can continuously run that fast, I don't know why they didn't toss the ball more. I mean, look how simple this is. Dude, By the way, Ezra, Ezra Cleveland, number 72, getting out there smoking. pretty well, too, here, man. And you know in that last rep, we saw him get off the ball as quick as we did. Yeah, and then you got you got Ed Ingram here looking back at the play. Don't look back. Don't don't look back at the okay. ball. Player. Rookie, rookie, doing? rookie, get your butt up there. Find the safety, and this is a touchdown. Ding. Is this a touchdown if he blocks that? Yeah, it is. It is. 100% a touchdown. What are you talking yeah. about? You of course think it 34, is. 34 is not going to catch him. No. Yeah, because Dalvin has to kind of slow Dalvin down when he sees. Yeah, because the... if 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 Ed Ingram's pushing the outside shoulder of this safety here, and say he meets him on the fifty yard line, he's going to be able to just take him where he wants to go, right? If he wants to try and cut him to the sideline, just run to the sideline. Dalvin makes one cut and he's up the numbers. Or if sixty seven gets him cut off, then he just pushes and presses in between the side the numbers and the sideline, which we call the sidewalk, and he gets his butt going out there, and then it's just a race down the sideline. You know, far be it for me to criticize uh, a 320-pound human who could crush me with his left hand at Ingram, but right. if he puts his eyes up the field here and so he's looking back here, you know, he's 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, be more like Christian Derrissaw. Go hunt, go hunting for those defensive backs. And Never look back at the ball unless it's a screen. Never. Never you, unless back. it's a screen, like just trust that your playmakers can make guys and outrun them. Interesting. All right, let's uh, let's see a Christian Derrissaw pancake block here. Mm, oh, like I remember this one. Block. I remember this one. Yeah, oh, yeah, so this is kind of a Giants. kind yep. of a pull, pull the rug out here. So again, keep your eye on number seventy-one, left side of your screen here. We'll run this play. Whoops! This is just a savvy move. This is something you don't see many from young players, right? Like this no. is something that Alex and I we we call it when we teach our young players. We're talking keep them in the rookie box, right? The rookie box. Throw your hands, take your set, get there. This is a eight eight-year vet move of like, hey, he's probably set this guy most of the game. He understands that this guy wants to get two hands on him. So he takes his set, stays patient, inside out. And then as soon as he sees this guy overextend, right, and he puts two hands out to try and make a bull rush move on him here, you just slap him down. You just slap him down, right? Like you see he's fully overextended here. You just slap him down, right? He takes that inside hand, slaps it down. This guy's got two feet up in the air, and now he can't make the turn. And then you just put him down, and then you just smush him into the turf. Yeah. And it's funny, times, for like live speed, this looks like the defensive end just kind of slips, but it was very no. much not a slip. It was, and this is this is the biggest problem that I worry about too. And you have to, we continuously coach this is that when the defensive player makes contact with you, see how subtle that was that he did that little slap. A lot of guys try to over exaggerate it, and it doesn't work. It's normally just a great reaction. He touched me, I slap his hand down, and just like Jeremiah said, he's overextended too much. Like just as he gets his hand slapped, he goes to make a bigger move on the outside, and that's what catches him. But a lot of guys don't end like this, but even this, like watch how he throws him down and tries to keep the space for Kirk at the same time. Because a lot of guys, when they do slap this, they kick their feet out and they get closer to the quarterback. But see how right here he starts to pull him down, and then he starts to like slam him to the ground. Dude, I love that. And that's yeah, he's, why it's almost like savvy. he has a he knows he almost has like a wall behind him that he needs to stay in front of, yes. so he yep. keeps keeps the pocket for Kirk, right? Yeah. Very the other thing, savvy. The other <laughs> thing too is a lot of guys. You see a lot of guys try and go with the left hand outside hand slap, right? They like to try and slap down, so it'd be like his seventy one here, be trying to kick that outside hand. The problem here is if you go slap with your left hand here to try and swipe him and trap him, and you miss. Now 51 is going to be able to try and grab your shoulder, right? So see how Derisaw pulls his shoulder away at the last second. If Derisaw swipes with his left hand here, you're exposing that left shoulder, which allows 51 to then maybe grab onto that and slingshot himself through, which is why if you're ever going to do this for your young O-lineman or your anything, if you're ever going to do a trap technique, it has to start with the inside hand. 
Yeah, look at that. Just he just, lay, you just know lays that hurt too. And you, and you got to keep the arms out. It's not a hold. I didn't no. tackle him. He's got the he's got the arms out as he's he falling to the ground. Hey, look at. <laughs> And this referee, out, ref. this referee is looking over there like, okay. Come we'll on, see. you know Cleet Blakeman ain't looking. Not gonna actually, <laughs> Mackie, oh, for, your, for your own information, it's actually not the guy on the left. They cross-watch. So it's actually oh, the white hat oh, over God. here on the right side watches the left side. This Yahoo over here on the left is watching the right side. That's why I said Cleet, because he's on the right. The there more you, The more you know. There it is. All right, oh, here's okay. a, this is a, this is a Vikings-Giants game. I think this is the regular season You're meeting between those two. You're obsessed with this series, dude. Seriously, you just love digging it in. What the Vikings, the Vikings Giants situation? Yeah. Hey, well, the was, first that, that dinner at Harry and Izzy's was fantastic. By the way, I don't thank want to you, talk about thank it. you. Alex. I do what, not want to what, talk about what, it. What, what was the bill? What was the bill that you oh, stuck it was, the booty it was, with? It wasn't, it wasn't as bad. bad as it could have been. It could have yeah. been really, really. bad. I was on a work trip, so I kept it. I kept it where we needed to be. We were it was only, prime after. It was only four <laughs> fillets and six Manhattans. It could have been dude, seven. A, could have been. If seven. anything, it was a great experience, dude. And you know what? It was worth it. I will get them back next year with something. I'm not even worried about it. Mm. And now, you you're blind. Lying. Put your can, blinders on. You can never be too optimistic about the Vikings. Uh, I got really playoffs. excited. Okay, leave me alone, dude. You put you put you put money on the Vikings in the playoffs. Not on like not in like Vegas, but uh, over dinner. That's your. I did. I did. And they and they really let me down. We'll see the next time that happens. So here's uh, here's Derisaw again. We're we're flipped here on the all twenty two. So Vikings coming at you on your on your screen. Such and a better view. The Giants are the Giants are sending pretty much everyone here. So is it called a Cali look? Double Cali, double barrel. Could be a lot of turns. We just put two linebackers up in here in the A gaps. And so basically, teams can do a lot of different things out of this, right? Like they can start twisting guys in the middle. They can rush everybody. They can drop everybody. It, then that's where it starts to make you have to think a little bit. But at the same time, you have to stay square and you have to get off the ball on this because no matter what, I don't even know the down and distance, but I'm guessing it's third down because look at all these linebackers up here walked up at defensive ends. You've got safeties in here in the middle. Like that rarely happens. This is a full slide to the right, and this is tough. And I think I remember this. This is the one where he blocked two, right? Darisaw takes 55. He locks in here. The, yeah. the, guy, the guy here that's really the unsung hero, and I know we're doing a Darisaw breakdown, is Brian O'Neill. Brian O'Neill from the right tackle position here, he takes two. What I mean by that, Bradbury, they, they do a great job of pushing through, right? It's really easy if you're going, oh, full slide. I get to stop where I get my guy, right? Like 53 is like my 53 is 75. He's like, that's my outside guy, but he's still got one more guy rushing. So they all take two here. Bradbury, Evan Ingram, Bradbury and O'Neal. They do a great job of just getting big, sitting in there, trying to just take as much as they can because you know you have the absolute dream child of the wide receiver out there, 18, where if you just know if they're sending this many, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the back end. They can't play zone coverage to this, and you're just going to bet that 18 is going to win, right? Kirk never takes yeah. his eyes off 18. No. If you go all the way to the back, Kirk sees where he's coming, right? Immediately he sees this is cover zero, and immediately he goes, okay, cover zero. They're going to all come here. Where's my eyes go? Where's 18? Right. Right. Where's 18, right? You know he's going to 18. The second he gets the snap, eyes straight to 18, and he's like just waiting for him to come out of his break, delivers a ball, and it's got to come out quick, mm -hmm. and then he just gives him a chance. Back, back foot hits, one hitch, go. Unless it's, four, unless it's fourth and eight in a playoff Unless it's fourth game. and six for the win. Yeah, and then we're not looking at 18, but that's, an, yeah, that's another story. Talk yeah, about it right. anymore. Go yeah. back here real quick. And then this is, remember, this is the one that we talked about where Bradbury in here ends up taking two, which is he does a great job. And even right here for Evan or Ed Ingram to, to go through Dexter Lawrence here, because watch, you'll see Dexter tries to grab him at the end. Like, that's one of the things that guys are doing in here. It's getting extremely hard to kick through people. But as you see this right now, like, Bradbury knows, hey, listen, we got trouble. There's too many guys out here. Ain't no way everyone's pushing through. I'm going to take two right here. Ed goes through Dexter, who's trying to pull him. And like Jeremiah said, Brian O'Neill on the edge getting all the way out there to make this throw. It's huge, dude. Yeah. So, Giants sent everyone. Uh, they landed nobody. And on the Darisaw front, he's just one-on-one -on -one with a bull rush here. No problems at all whatsoever, at least from Sit. Drop your hips. He's got good inside hands, good leverage. He stays and balanced. Kirk's got hold. five yards here of pocket right here in the in the angle he's throwing to JJ too. Beautiful. Interesting. Yeah, right. Okay. How okay. about Ezra? Ezra got out of there doing nothing. <laughs> I used to love that. <laughs> Sorry, Everyone's taken too. And you're like, well, guys, I'll just chill here for a minute. Uh, you guys got, got it. it. You got it. You got back it. Back to back plays here against the Cardinals. Yes. Uh, again, coming at you on your screen. So Darisaw's on the right of our screen here. 
We'll run. I'm just going to run these, and you guys can take me wherever you want to. It's back-to-back plays. Let's see where we're going with this. Ooh. Incomplete pass. Oh, on this one. one. This one's. Ooh, these are my favorites. Oh, my goodness. The oh, fact God, that they... Darius saw. Go back to the, the second clip. Go right to the middle there if you can, Mackie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll start on that second clip. The ability here, if you watch his footwork, he's got to get full head replace on the inside. His footwork is questionable. But because he's so athletic, right, he starts with his hat on the outside, but he stays square, which is the biggest thing here, right? We'd like to see more of a drop step from his inside of his right foot there. But the ability to stay square, helmet adjust, and then just run your feet to get yourself in the body position that you need to be. Right there. Like right there. And then the ability to go from here. Again, we talk about the balance with him. His ability to go from here where all his weight's on his left foot right there and then to press it back vertically because he sees his guys folding back over the top and get Ezra Cleveland off on this is very, very difficult to do unless you're an extremely powerful and athletic human being. Yeah, it's and look, he's the one that creates this cut lane that cuts it back. Without him, this ball is not going anywhere. See how they get right when you play it a little bit? Like Jeremiah said, his head's behind the block right there because he's staying square, but right there, when he wrenches it and then gets going again, him and Ezra are the ones that create this this lane for Dalvin to run through, which is so hard. And to get really, if we want to get three techniques spiking in there. I'll say, yeah, if we want to get really technical, the person who messes this play up is the three technique. So if you look at the blitz, right, we always talk about gap integrity from a defensive standpoint, right? Gap integrity. Well, in order to have this a gap covered, if you have three guys coming from the outside here, this defensive tackle has to get to the a gap. This guy on the edge has to get to the B gap. And then you have your outside contained with the outside blitzer. Ezra Cleveland does a great job of putting the brakes on, but it's really Derisaw who gets there and presses the hole vertically. You can't just stop him on the line of scrimmage. You have to be able to move him vertically in order to create that lane. And now there's no gap integrity in the A gap, which is right where Dalvin Cook hits this. Oh, talk dirty. <laughs> talk dirty. You want to hear an offensive lineman talk dirty right there. Those right last there. 60 seconds mm-hmm. from Jeremiah. Gap oh. integrity, baby. <laughs> Well, we need to print those shirts, I think. Yeah, that's how you cut the defense, down. though, dude. That's a great job right there. That's why I love when they run plays like this out of this because the defense thinks that, oh, you're passing the ball. We're going to send somebody off the edge, and all of a sudden you just split the defense right in half and let Dalvin run it right through the middle. So uh, the, the, the first play here, this is just an incomplete pass um, to the right side if you're the offense's vantage point. But I just thought this was fascinating and that here's Christian Darris, uh just – not budging at all whatsoever against another massive human being. I mean, just, just, just literally out on an island, you can't get by me. Sorry, you can try four different moves. You're not going anywhere. Just chill. Look at this. It's his, ba- it's his inside hand, Mac. Yeah. If you watch his inside hand here, he steps out, sees the drop, and then right there, 94's left hand is down, and you can see Darisaw's right hand just go right to the breastplate. Right, he goes right to the breastplate, sticks his hand in there, and then he's in full control because he's got inside out leverage. He doesn't let go. A lot of times guys make the mistake of they punch with that inside hand, but they don't grab. Right? You punch, you grab, and then now make him force to get that thing off of you. And then he regroups and he's still got inside hand leverage. If you have inside hand leverage on this guy and you just walk your hips to his hips like he is, this guy's not going anywhere. There you can go nowhere. You have no you have no chance. (laughs) The guy's like, Yeah, I give up. I give up. Wow. That's right. They do give up sometimes. I think I need a. I think I need a smoke after uh, mm, smoking a whiskey after watching yeah. that. It's pretty good, man. So, Christian Derisaw. Wow. Right. For such a young player, such great highlights. I love watching him in space. And dude, the fact that he can set, like Jeremiah said, like that's the one thing I don't think people understand is that when you, if you want to be a good pass pro technician, you have to have extremely good balance. Like you have to be able to get from A to B as fast as humanly possible. But while you're doing it, you have to be balanced because, like you saw in there, there's things that happen that you can't control. Something's happening from the right. You're gonna get pushed. You feel something. Everything you're doing and everything he does, he's always well balanced, which is great. Great stuff, guys. Great stuff. I feel like I learned something there. I feel like I'm not as much of a dumbass watching football. You know, yeah, that's the goal, Mackie. We're just here right? to educate. <laughs> We're, We're just here to buddy. educate. And Be understand. less of a dumbass watching football is the new slogan for hey, this show. Dumbass. I think. Just watch the trenches, man. They'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Well, that's the problem the is when you watch the TV, all it does is follow the ball, dude. We should. I mean, tre- trenches cam would be. If, if I could yeah. watch the sky cam, end zone cam only. Yes. 
Sports all I'd watch. Well, that's it and that's what I mean. Watch. We got twenty years worth of hell, twenty five years worth of us playing Madden on video games, right? We're all we're all used to playing from that angle. But like the last video game that gave you the current TV view was like Tecmo Super Bowl from mm-hmm. nineteen ninety two or something, right? Yeah, two D. It was all two D. <laughs> yes. So, all right, well, there it is, a breakdown of Christian Derrissaw. We're keeping track of, of T-shirt ideas for the O-line committee. Gap integrity is on the list here. So mm. if you guys or if the audience has ideas gap for... Gap integrity. <laughs> I love it. You just see Booney rolling into Kowalski's with a, a gap integrity hooded sweatshirt sometime here in the next couple of months. Dude, dude, <laughs> hooking it up with the pie these days, they are. Oh, dude, my God. You have God. a problem. I do, I do. I have a problem. I need to see um, Cope. Uh that's the O-line committee, a Christian Derrissaw break.